high points we have for you here on the Atom stage, here on the Comic Con Brussels 2022, to end this evening from all of, let's say, the other side of the planet. One of the most intriguing characters, uh, actors that I've ever seen, and I'm totally excited to be able to present him to you here for your questions and for all of your passion. Let me hear a warm applause, ladies and gentlemen, Ron Perlman! One and only. Ever seen. <laughs> oh, great to have you here. Good to be here. Is it is the is the seat comfortable enough? It's a little low. It's a little <laughs> you're gonna have to help me get back up because my we'll knees manage. aren't what they used to be. We'll manage. Um, so in between I'll be doing some translations into French. Um, and then I think we have all the languages covered here. No Flemish? No, would you like me to? I can. Well, yeah, tell right. mostly uh, in Dutch. How is your? How are your languages? I speak fluent. Uh, um, I don't even speak that good English, really. <laughs> With, as long as I understand, I can make a translation, and we'll we'll get there eventually. Um, you've come to Europe quite early in your career. Um, the first time I saw you uh, in a movie was La Cité des Enfants Perdus where you, uh, well, it's the first time I, I know that this, this actor is different. Did you ever l learn any French at the time? I'm sure I did, but I can't remember any of it. Totally forgot it? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, and the same uh, director, uh, Jeunet, then uh, also had you on Alien Resurrection. Yes. Yes. Um, where they had part of the same actor team as well on there. You've been in science fiction movies, you've had the uh, the Biker Hells Angel series. I'm sorry, I forgot the title for a moment. That's okay, I did too. You did too. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> um, but have you ever been to Belgium before? Uh, I was here uh, five years ago. I shot a movie called Moonwalkers with Rupert Grint and uh, Robert Sheehan and uh, who else was in that movie? A few uh, native actors, uh, Belgian actors. Can't remember anybody's name, but yeah. I spent like three months here. Um, and, and, and did you get any chance to see anything of the country or did you, were you stuck to the set all the time? No, uh, no I, I mean, you know, I, I saw a lot of the city. I uh, have some friends out in the country, so I saw a lot of the countryside as well, and I had a great time. Excellent. Donc, euh, pas sa première fois qu'il était en Belgique, il y a cinq ans qu'il était ici aussi pour euh, le tournage de Moonwalkers avec Rupert Grint. Um, C'était un excellent temps à ce moment-là. Um, I'll tell the audience, je, je vous dis, uh, uh, Thomas, where, there is Thomas, voilà Thomas. Um, we'll be taking some questions from the audience, I think, right away. Um, si quelqu'un a une question, if anybody has a question, just raise your hand and Thomas will be oops, right up in front here. Hi Ron, thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to go further back because uh, La Guerre des Feux was one of the first ones you did with uh, Jean-Jacques Arnaud, I think it was, back in the day. Um, if you compare like the European directors to the American ones, which one would you prefer and why? Um, I don't really feel like there's any difference between European directors and, and American. I, I don't think you can you can qualify the differences between directors because of their nationality. Every director is different, whether he's Canadian, American, African, Italian. You know, I've worked all over the world. I've worked now. Um, on six and a half continents, there's only seven. I never worked in Antarctica. Um, but um, yes, yes. I've worked with directors of every nationality, and some of them are um, uh, very, very easy.
easy to work with, some of them a little bit more difficult to work with, but it has nothing to do with nationality. But I've been very lucky because the bulk of my career has, has not been in American mainstream cinema. You know, there's a lot of foreign directors, people from all over the world who, who um, I guess the standards uh, are a little bit lower. No, that was a stupid thing to say. Where are the standards any, any lower? Well, they don't get any much lower than in Hollywood. <laughs> Which is why I work elsewhere. Thank you, thank you. That's a, that's a good answer, thank you. Donc la question, est-ce qu'il y a une différence entre les réalisateurs américains et les réalisateurs européens? Um, Ron Perlman, il dit qu'il n'y a pas vraiment une différence au niveau de nationalité. Il y a des réalisateurs qui sont bien, il y en a d'autres qui sont un peu plus durs à travailler avec, mais cela dépend aux réalisateurs et pas aux nationalités. Il a travaillé sur presque tous les continents du monde, pas encore sur l'Antarctique, mais euh, un jour, on verra bien, peut-être qu'il euh, fera un film là-bas aussi. Yes. If you, if you could travel in time, and with all the wisdom that you have now, you could meet your 18-year-old self, what would you tell to yourself if you could? One thing. I would tell him to not worry because he's going to have a great life. And uh, when I was 18, I was very worried. I didn't see anything fitting. I didn't see anything working out. Um, I saw nothing but um, resistance and I wasn't particularly at peace with myself. I wasn't all that happy with myself. So one of the reasons you become an actor is because you get to be other people for a while. And it's so much easier to be somebody else than yourself. But I didn't know uh, at 18 what I, what, how peaceful I would eventually end up being and what a great life I would have in, in acting. And, and traveling and seeing the world and meeting amazing people and doing things that I was very, very proud of. And having as long a career as I've had. Most actors, you know, they, they're done by, you know, a third of the way through or halfway through. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in my 70s now and I'm busier than ever. And so I'm very lucky and I would tell that guy, baby, just relax and have some fun and um, don't worry about the drinking <laughs> because um, are you crying? Oh, so I'm not crying, you are crying. <laughs> She's crying, that's so sweet. I'm sorry it moved me. I'm, I'm sorry it moved me. But thank you very much. Donc, qu'est-ce qu'il, s'il pourrait faire un voyage dans le temps vers euh, soi-même à 18 ans, qu'est-ce qu'il donnerait comme, comme avis euh, ou, ou comme, comme chose à, à dire euh, Et il dira, sois calme, ne te fais pas trop de soucis, tu te sens pas très bien dans ta peau maintenant, mais tout se passera bien, n'aie pas autant de peur et accepte les bonnes choses qui vont arriver et tout sera bien soi-même, tu auras une vie excellente avec des belles aventures euh, encore devant toi. He speaks really good French, right? <laughs> Let's have a hand for Pablo. He speaks such good French. Merci, merci, thank you. Especially for a guy with a Spanish name. Ah, yes, it's even more difficult because... Shall, shall I complicate? No, I'm not going to complicate. It's your world, baby. I'm just living in it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you were here first, so isn't it your world, kind of? Yeah, well, I, you know, I wasn't going to point that out, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think I saw one over there, somebody. Is Thomas? Oh, here. Oh, which, and then we get to the back. Sure. Hi. Uh, first, welcome in Belgium, and welcome actually again for the first. Uh, I loved you in the Hellboy movie you did. Perfect. But I also loved you in a way that you did the voice of the Lich King for Adventure Time. And I was wondering, I don't have to, but just a question. If you could read one text out of the series, out loud, if you could do that. I have the text right here. No, 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 no. You don't have enough money for me to... Uh, <laughs> no problem, then. To, 
to, to give a performance here today. No, I don't have nothing on the leash. Okay. Thank you. I'm, not, I'm not suggesting you're poor, but I'm very expensive. Maybe that's why you're so calm and at ease right now. That's exactly. That and the drugs. Ah. A lot of medication right now. <laughs> that helps. Thank you very much. Well, well, Thomas, it, uh, all the way back there. I'm gonna take the opportunity because uh, I think it's safe to say that you're mostly known uh, now as in, as Hellboy in that character, um, which I knew before the movie came out as a comic book. Was were comic books something in your life before you became a part of that production? I've heard of comic books. But you did not. I actually held them in my hand. I saw them. I'm not a comic book lover, um, but Guillermo del Toro is, and he's the guy who uh, he knows more about comic books probably than anybody on the planet right now. And he's, he has a, a collect a collection of comic books that are worth millions and millions of dollars, first editions and stuff. And so I was basically just um, driving in his car. He was the guy who was enthusiastic about it, and he was also saw something about the Hellboy character and me and my weird, sick, twisted, um, underachievement-oriented personality. And Hellboy is the most underachieving uh, superhero you've ever met. He'd much rather smoke cigars and, and eat pizza and play with his cats than go out and save the world. But. Um, so yeah, I was, I was, I was, beneficiary of somebody else's comic book enthusiasm. Donc, euh, je demandais si, si il lisait déjà des comics avant qu'il entrait dans la production de Hellboy. Euh, il savait qu'ils existaient, mais il n'en avait pas lu en fait. Mais Guillermo del Toro, oui, Guillermo del Toro connaît presque, probablement tout ce qu'il y a à savoir sur les comics, et c'est plutôt. Euh, son enthousiasme qui lui a convaincu, comme Guillermo voyait, des, des traits personnels, euh, des traits du personnage Hellboy, aussi en Ron Perlman, qui se ressemblait un peu dans le sens qu'il qu ne sont pas trop ambitieux, qu'il préfère euh, de tenir la vie un peu calme. Euh, et c'est comme ça qu'il a pu lui convaincre à prendre le rôle. Yes. Hi. If you can pick one thing to do in your free time or hobby, if you have free time, what would it be? Eating. Oh! <laughs> I like food a lot. Which one do you like most? I like pizza. <laughs> Just pizza? Like uh, Chicago's pizza or homemade? Um, oh no, I don't like homemade pizza. I like, I like to eat pizza where the guy really knows what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> Alright, I like that song. Do, do, you, do you have ingredients that or make a pizza perfect for you and some that would, would be a big no-no? Well, I'm a big fan of um, New York pizza because the crust is thin um, and my toppings are, uh, I'm, I like meat, I like pepperoni, I like sausage, I like meatballs. So in case any of you guys you know, want to buy me a pizza, now you know uh, how to do it. A meatball pizza. because. So, I guess the most difficult ingredients for many people are either anchovies or, or, or pineapple. Oh no, I would never put pineapple on my pizza. <laughs> it's a very divisive topic, uh, immediately. Wow, you people go to war for this, right? <laughs> Who likes pineapple on pizza? That's the most violent reaction I've seen since I've come to Belgium. <laughs> So we, we like to keep life calm, but when you start messing with pineapples on pizza, I guess there's a lot of fire within us. Who does not like pineapple on pizza? There's a slight majority, slight majority here. Donc pas d'ananas sur pizza, voilà, on est clair. Les pizzas, c'est son manger préféré. What work are you most proud of? What was the most satisfying role you performed? The most satisfying role. What are you most proud of? What work are you most proud of? Um, I really, really have had so many roles that I loved playing and was very proud to 
of the of the the way they turned out. Um, I can't really pick one, but um, the scariest was uh, Hand of God, um, which was a TV series. I'm, I'm not sure it came here, but I was playing a character that was constantly having a nervous breakdown, and so it was very, very challenging to play somebody who was out of control emotionally and uh, scary. And uh, I'm proud that I said yes to it because every every part of my body said, no, no, don't do this. It's going to be too hard. So every time, every once in a while, you do the hard thing, and, but you end up feeling better about yourself than you would have if you if you were avoided it. Thank you. Donc il n'y a pas un rôle spécifique duquel il est euh, le plus fier, euh, mais le rôle qui lui a fait le plus peur, c'est dans une série qui s'appelle The Hand of God, euh, dont on ne sait pas si ça s'est passé ici à la télé ou euh, quelque part, euh, dans laquelle il joue un personnage qui tout le temps est en, 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 en état de crise, euh, de collapse. Euh, I'm trying, nervous breakdown, I don't know how to say in French, but I think they get it. A nervous breakdown. Crise de nerfs, un crise de nerfs. Et tout son corps lui disait, hein, tout son être disait, ne fais pas cette rôle, cette rôle. Obviously, you two came from very different families. Yeah. Well, yeah. when were you born? If, if, if you don't know what a nervous breakdown is, but he does. Uh, well, I don't know in French. Uh, mais, mais, mais euh, il est très, très heureux qu'il a quand même fait le rôle, euh, même si ça lui faisait peur, parce que ça lui a fait découvrir des, 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 un côté de, de, de ne pas avoir peur, mais de, de vraiment de découvrir et de prendre la vie euh, telle qu'elle est. Um, there, question. Hi. You're known for so many great looks and styles in your movie, uh, transformations in all kinds of movies. How much are you involved as an actor in, in the look of a certain character and when did you wish you would be more involved maybe in a, in a certain look or makeup, makeup thing? The, the roles you're talking about, um, those looks are controlled by other artists. My job is to, and, and the, 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 for me, the, the, the number one joy of working in movies is that you fit into a team. A lot of people specialize in different things and you have your thing that you do, but sometimes your thing doesn't begin until other artists have had their input. And especially when they're creating a look for uh, Beauty and the Beast or Hellboy, you look at what it is they've created and now it's your job to become that thing and bring him to life. And it's, it's beautiful because um, you have to sort of, uh, you have to um, relinquish control, your own control, and give yourself over to somebody else's expertise. And uh, I find that one of the really good aspects of working in movies. Donc la question, comme il a joué autant de rôles où il se fait transformer, euh, dans ce, quel sens il a un, un, quelque chose à dire sur cette transformation et si quelquefois il aurait voulu avoir quelque chose à dire dans, dans la façon qu'il est transformé. Euh, mais il, ce qui lui donne la joie à jouer dans des films, c'est que c'est toujours c'est une, une grande équipe avec chacun sa spécialité et euh, que, que le but, c'est le défi, c'est de... Eux, ils font le meilleur ce qu'ils peuvent faire et puis de trouver son propre endroit euh, euh, dans ce qu'on te présente pour que le projet, le film, en total, euh, excelle un peu euh, tout ce que chacun sait faire. Oui, c'est clair parce que j'ai un peu... Euh, parfois, je cherche un peu mes mots, hein. <rire> Mais c'est ça ce qu'il aime. Autant euh, de pouvoir travailler avec les talents d'autres gens euh, et que chacun en fait peut construire sur les talents des autres pour faire quelque chose qui est plus grand que de l'individu. I made it. I paraphrased a little bit. Didn't say any funny things. I think. 
Do you feel like I was incorrect? You're looking at me like I might... Yeah, I, I, I did, actually. <laughs> I read you right. I see. Poor, I'm saying, poor guy, man. Yeah. It's okay. See, I, 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 one of the joys here is that, that other people are very well in saying what they mean, and then it's my job to fit in. To screw it up. And to... to <laughs> Well, if you want to call it that. I didn't really want to, but I did. <laughs> as long as it's out there. Yes. Well done. <laughs> yes, sir. Hi. How did you prepare for uh, your character for Sons of Anarchy? With all the motor gang violence and that kind of stuff? Did you... Uh, preparation for that was to try to figure out the mentality of us somebody who would become a member of a club like that um, because the, the, the motorcycle clubs are very sort of specific subculture their own they have their own sort of set of laws and, and mores and norms than the, than other parts of the society so it's very important to understand why you want to be a part of that kind of a world and that's going to dictate your frame of mind your emotions and everything like that so for sons of anarchy i read as much as i could about the hell's angels about motorcycle clubs in general i visited with motorcycle clubs if i had the opportunity to and sat around spent some hours with them you know cool Ouais, donc comment on se prépare pour Sons of Anarchy, pour son rôle euh, Surtout, il a essayé de chercher la mentalité de quelqu'un qui veut faire partie d'un subculture, d'un groupe pareil, comme ils ont leurs propres règles, leurs propres demandes de la société. Euh, et on a besoin d'une certaine mentalité pour vouloir être partie d'un Hells Angels, par exemple. Donc il a lu beaucoup sur les Hells Angels, il a visité plusieurs clubs de motards. Um, donc c'est surtout ça ce qu'il a fait. That was much better. Yes, thank you. You're getting better at this. Well, it's almost the end of the day. I should, I guess. <laughs> I just had a question more in the line of Sons of Anarchy. Did you ride motorcycles before and did you continue afterward? And what was your favorite type of motorcycle? I did not ride motorcycles before. I did not ride motorcycles after, and I almost didn't ride during. Because when people saw how bad a rider I was, they... That's when they wrote about my arthritis, you know. Donc il n'a jamais conduit un moto, un moto avant la série, euh, ni après. Il n'en a presque pas conduit, même pendant la série, euh, parce qu'ils ont vu qu'il était vraiment horrible à conduire un moto, donc ils ont changé un peu le scénario pour qu'il conduise moins. Voilà. The hardest part of uh, Sons of Anarchy for me was convincing people that I could actually ride a bike. Voilà, C'était le plus dur de convaincre les gens qu'il en était capable, dans un sens. Yes. Hi, uh, Ron. I was curious about the movie Season of the Witch uh, with Nick Cage. Uh, do you have any uh, funny uh, experiences filming that, or anything that was particularly dangerous? Oh yeah, I have a lot of funny stuff filming that. Unfortunately, I can't share it with you. <laughs> really? Okay, okay. <laughs> Donc il y a beaucoup de bon temps chez Season of the Witch, mais il ne peut pas les partager. Voilà. Je pense qu'il y a une ou deux autres questions. Est-ce qu'il y a un rôle que tu voudrais faire dans les films passés ou un rôle que tu voudrais faire dans des histoires qui n'ont pas encore été faites dans les films La chose que je travaille maintenant est. The last years of Ernest Hemingway. I've been developing that for about five years. And so um, that's my current passion project. That's something that's not coming from outside. Most of my work comes from outside. And, it's, you know, 
I get a script, somebody else's project, somebody else's idea. But this was something that was um, kind of a, an obsession for me. And hopefully I'll make it sometime this year. Donc pour le moment, euh, on lui a demandé est-ce qu'il y a un rôle que vous aimeriez bien jouer. Euh, pour le moment, il est euh, occupé déjà depuis 5 ans avec son propre projet, le, The Last Years of Ernest Hemingway, donc les dernières années d'Ernest Hemingway. En général, il joue des rôles où d'autres gens ont écrit les scénarios, les histoires, mais dans ce cas-ci, c'est sa propre passion, son propre projet euh, qu'il est encore en train de, de réaliser. The Last Years of Ernest Hemingway. That will be the title. It's just about the last years of Ernest c'est pas le titre, mais c'est sur les dernières années d'Ernest Hemingway. Final question. Anyone? None. Then I guess the audience in Belgium has been saturated with your words. We are very are happy. speechless. They have no idea. Like, well, wow. He's real. Well, I don't know if I would go that far, but uh, <laughs> they're speechless. You know. Thank you immensely for your time here my pleasure for answering all these questions here are the fans they love you a big round of applause Thank you.